In this lecture, you'll learn about a basic initial configuration to put on your routers and switches. One of the first things that we'll do is configure IP addresses. Your routers provide connectivity between your different IP subnets. That's their main job. So the routers need to have interfaces in the different subnets and they need to have IP addresses on those interfaces. Those IP addresses will act as the default gateway address for any hosts that are in that subnet. The command to put an IP address on an interface, first off, go to the interface. So you see in the example here, we've got a router down at the bottom. Interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0 on the right has got IP address 192.168.0.1 slash 24. And the interface on the left, fast ethernet 0 slash 1, has got IP address 192.168.1.1 slash 24. Obviously, the IP addresses need to be in different different subnets that are on different interfaces. So the command to do this from global configuration mode, we then go to interface configuration mode. So the command is interface fast ethernet zero slash zero, then to put the IP address on there, IP address space 192.168.0.1 and then another space and then the subnet mask 255.255.255.0 the ip address and the subnet mask are both entered with one command and you have to enter the subnet mask in full dot a decimal notation you can't enter slash 24 in ios on our routers interfaces are shut down by default. So remember to also put in the no shutdown command to bring the interface up. Okay, so we do that for interface fast ethernet zero slash zero, and then we also need to configure interface fast ethernet zero slash one for our example. It gets IP address 192.168.1.1, subnet mask 255.255.255.0, no shutdown. After we have configured this, the router is going to be able to route traffic between those two networks. As well as being able to route traffic, it also gives IP connectivity to the router itself. So after we've done this, we would be able to open up a telnet or SSH client like Putty and connect to the router to manage it. So obviously this is more convenient than having to walk down there with a console cable and hook it up physically every time. Once you've got IP addresses on your router, you'll be able to connect to those IP addresses to manage the router remotely from wherever you are. We're also going to need an IP address on our switch to manage that as well. Now, a layer two switch is not IP routing aware. It does, however, support a single IP address, which is used for management. So you can't put multiple IP addresses on a layer two switch. It will only allow you to put one IP address on there. And that's so that we can, again, tell net or secure shell to the switch remotely to manage it. Unlike on our router, where we configure the IP address on an interface on a switch, a layer two switch, the management IP address goes on a VLAN interface, which is a virtual interface. So when we configure our VLAN interface, that's called an SVI, a switched virtual interface. And this is going to be in VLAN one. Now, I know we haven't covered VLANs yet. They're going to be configured in another section. For all you need to know for now is that the default VLAN is VLAN 1, and all of our layer 2 switch ports on a switch will be in VLAN 1 by default. So to get management connectivity to that switch, we configure our management IP address on the virtual VLAN 1 interface. That will allow us to connect to the switch from the same IP subnet that that IP address is in, but our administrators are probably going to be located somewhere else. They're going to be in a different IP subnet. So the switch also needs to be able to get out of that subnet. So just like a normal host would need, it's also going to need to have a default gateway. Our configuration on our switch 
for our management IP address, interface VLAN 1, then we configure the IP address the same way. So I've got IP address 192.168.0.10, subnet mask 255.255.255.0. Now, on a router, interfaces are shut down by default. On a switch, interfaces are enabled by default. So there wasn't actually any need to do a no shutdown here. However, I'm just in the practice that whenever I configure an interface, I always do a no shutdown on there. It doesn't do any harm, and it saves me having to think, do I need to do a no shutdown or not? Just always do a no shutdown whenever you configure an interface. It saves you forgetting it. Then we exit back to global configuration mode, and to configure the default gateway, the command is I IP default gateway, for our example, 192.168.0.1. So that will give us IP connectivity on the switch, and we'll be able to ping the switch now and ping out from the switch as well. Now, I said that this IP address is for management. We actually need to do some additional commands as well to allow Telnet and or SSH access into the switch. We'll cover those in the later section, which is securing Cisco devices. So let's have a look at how to do this in the lab. For the lab example, we've got router R1, and we're gonna configure IP address 192.168.0.1 on the physical interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0. That's going to be the default gateway address for our switch, which is switch 1. Switch 1 is going to be connected to the router through physical interface fast ethernet 0 slash 1, and that will be in VLAN 1 by default. For the management IP address, we will configure that on the VLAN 1 switched virtual interface. We'll give it IP address 192.168.0.10. Once we've done that, the switch should have connectivity to 192.168.0.1 because it's on the same subnet. We want it to have connectivity to other subnets out through the router though, so we'll also configure the switch with an IP default gateway address of 192.168.0.1. Okay, let's have a look at this in the lab. So I better configure the router first because this has just got a new configuration as well. So I'll go to enable on here, configure terminal, and let me just jump back to the slide to check the IP address on here. Okay, so interface fast ethernet 0 slash 0. I'm going to give it IP address 192.168.0.1. So interface fast ethernet zero slash zero IP address 192.168.0.1 a space and then I configure the subnet mask which was 255.255.255.0. Now this is a router, so the interface is shut down by default, so I have to remember to do a no shutdown on here. Okay, so that's the router configured. Then if I go on to the switch, enable and configure terminal, and let's have a look at the diagram again. This was on the VLAN interface, 192.168.0.10. So interface VLAN 1 and IP address 192.168.0.10.255.255.255.0. And this is not shut down by default anyway, but it doesn't do any harm. I'm just in the habit of always doing a no shutdown whenever I configure my interface. Okay, so now the switch should be able to communicate with the router. Let's check that. So I'll go back down to the enable prompt and I'll ping 192.168.0.1. And good, we've got connectivity, that's all good. So I've got connectivity on my 192.168.0 subnet, but I want to be able to get out to other subnets as well. So I need to configure the default gateway. The command for that is IP default dash gateway. And the router was at 192.168.0.1. 
Okay, so that is the initial IP connectivity configured on there. If we go back to the slides again, and I've made a note down here that this is how you configure the management IP address. We actually have to do some additional commands to allow access via Telnet or SSH. I'm not going to show you that here because it's covered in a later section, which is the securing Cisco devices section. But right now I've got IP connectivity to switch so I can do things like do pings out from there. Okay, next thing we want to do for the basic configuration is to configure a host name. A descriptive host name makes it easier to identify the device. For example, I could maybe call it New York dash floor one dash switch one. So typically you will specify where the switch is and maybe some other descriptive description on there as well. In the lab, I'm just going to call it hostname SW1 for switch one. So let's jump back on the lab again and on my switch. Notice right now the default hostname on a switch is just switch. So that's what is showing up on the command prompt. Now when I enter hostname SW1 and hit enter, notice that the command prompt immediately changes to show the hostname. This is useful because a really common mistake is to configure the wrong device by accident. Like you notice on here, I've got two different tabs open. I've got a tab for R1 and a tab for switch one. It's really easy when you're working from templates to paste the wrong config into the wrong command line. By having the host name showing up here, it makes it a little bit less likely that you're going to do that. Okay, so it gives you a nice description. You can see what device you're on. Also, if you're doing troubleshooting from neighboring devices, then it will show up as its host name as well. So it just makes it easy to see what's going on. Okay, back to the slides again. Next thing we're going to want to do is configure descriptions on our interfaces. So interface fast ethernet zero slash one was connected to the router. So let's put a description on there. So back to the command line again, I'll go to interface fast ethernet zero slash one, and I'll say description link to R1. Again, this is going to be useful for troubleshooting later. If I'm doing some troubleshooting and I'm looking at the configuration on here, I can immediately see that fast ethernet zero slash one is the interface that's connected to router R1. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with Cisco Networks for free, then you can download my 400-page CCNA lab guide, which you can see above my head right now. Also, check out the video about my CCNA course. It's the highest rated course online. Thanks.